The next type of source that has planar symmetry that we'd like to look at is a slab of charge. Now this is an infinite, semi-infinite slab of charge. I'll write down x equals 0 here in the middle, and this side is x minus d over 2, and we'll call this x d over 2. So the slab has size d. And this slab has a charge density rho, and for this particular example, we're going to consider the case where rho is uniform, and we'll make it positive. Now, just like because a slab has the same planar symmetry as a sheet, we know that the electric field will point away from the slab, and we have three, we actually have four regions here. One, two, three, four. And on the outside, I'll just put E outside with the region denoted, the field should point away, now inside, it's interesting that we know at the center, the field has to be zero. Now why is that? Because if the field is pointing away, somewhere in the middle, it has to be zero. And by the symmetry, it has to be at the center of the slab. And that will tell us that on this side of the center, E3, the field is going to be pointing to the right. And on this side, E2, the field will be pointing that way. And that is what the electric field looks like inside the slab. And now, to make this calculation, um, we have to choose some Gaussian surfaces. And there's a lot of different ways to do this. So we'll begin by looking at regions 1 and 4. And we're going to choose a Gaussian surface and again exploit some symmetry. So let's draw the slab. It's a thickness d, a charge density rho. And if we pick equidistant s on both sides, we expect the fields to have the same magnitude by symmetry. So our Gaussian surface will look like a cylinder. And the charge enclosed is in this region. Now, again, we have n hat, this is region 4. We have n hat, region 1. We have E, region 1. We have E, region 4. But we've said those are the same magnitudes. So we can apply Gauss's law that the flux of E is equal to the charge enclosed. And now, once again, we can calculate. Because the electric field points away, there's no flux through the body of the cylinder, and we have just flux on both sides. E is pointing out on both sides, so that flux on both sides is positive, and we'll write it as just E1, and we know in magnitude that E1 is equal to E4 in magnitude. So I'm going to write that as E1 times A. I'll write another E1 times A, because they're the same magnitudes. And the charge enclosed, now this is a volume charge density. Rho is charge per volume. So what is the volume of a cylinder? Well, it's just the cross-sectional area, A, times the thickness of the cylinder, D. And we divide by epsilon naught. And so we get 2E1A by applying Gauss's law, rho AD, epsilon A, and the magnitude of the field is given by rho d over 2 epsilon naught. Now, remember, it's pointing, let's call this our positive i hat direction. In region 1, it's in the negative i hat direction. And in region 4, it's in the positive i hat direction. Now, what about inside? Well, that's a little bit trickier. And what we'd like to do is now draw another Gaussian surface for the region inside. And I'll try to show that over here. So inside, I'll draw my slab. And now, I could do the same type of symmetric Gaussian surface um, as I did before. So, But I'll make it inside the slab. And I have E2. E3, 
pointing out, and I'm going to call this my variable x. So my Gaussian surface is probing the inner region where x can go from 0 to some distance out here. But the whole size here, let's make x positive in this case, is just 2x. And now by symmetry again, our Gaussian law calculation, flux of E equals charge enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, the flux is still one side over here plus one over there. We still have a cross-sectional area A. So I get 2E, and I'll just call it, it doesn't matter, they have the same magnitudes. I'll call this time magnitude 3A equals the charge enclosed, shade in that charge enclosed, and we get rho times the size 2x times a over epsilon naught. And this tells us that our electric field is E3 is equal to rho x a. A's cancel on both sides. So we get rho x over epsilon naught. And that is our electric field in regions 3. It points this way. The magnitude in region 2 is the other way. And we want to finish by writing down an expression for all of the electric fields in these regions. And I'm just going to give myself a little space over here. And this is a little complicated, but we'll write E. So in region 1, which is when x is less than minus d over 2. We calculated that field, rho d over 2 epsilon naught in the minus i hat direction. Now, I can do something interesting, which you'll see handles both cases. Inside the slab, I'm going to write my electric field as rho x over epsilon naught i hat. And you may think that, wait a second, it's pointing in a different direction for negative x over here. But the direction here is net, when x is negative, it's in the negative i hat direction. And that's precisely the way the field points. When we're on the positive side and x is positive, it's pointing in the positive i hat direction. So this expression handles the field in that region. And finally, we have rho d over 2 epsilon naught i hat when x is bigger than d over 2. Now, Again, what about at the boundaries of the slab? Well, if we made these results all equal, you can see that when you set x equal to d over 2, our fields will be continuous. And so our res results extend like that. And that's how we describe the electric field in all three regions of space. This is a detailed calculation and a little bit long to do. But there we have it for the infinite slab. Now we're going to consider even a more difficult problem where we have a slab. And I'm going to choose a coordinate system where this is x equals 0, i hat, x equals d over 2, x equals minus d over 2. But now our slab has a charge density that is non-uniform. And what I'm going to describe is a positive charge density. So I'm going to have a positive constant times the absolute value of x. And this holds, this tells us if we plotted rho of x versus x, it's going to look something like that. And it goes to 0 outside the slabs. So this is only inside the slab. So that would be x equals d over 2 and x equals minus d over 2. So this charge distribution will give us a more complicated field inside. Now, remember, by symmetry, electric fields point away from the slab, and E is 0 at the center. And I want to focus on what we call region 3, the electric field for the positive value of x. Now, I know that E is 0 in the center. So that's my picture. 
And now I'm going to draw separately my Gaussian surface. And I'm going to do something different. I'm going to choose one face of the Gaussian surface on my plane x equals 0. Because here, the E field is 0. And I only have flux through that face, cross-sectional area A. So that makes the flux part of our Gauss's law calculation equal Q enclosed over epsilon naught. The flux part is a little bit easier. It's just E3 times A. But the charge enclosed, that's going to be the tricky thing. And remember, I'll give a parameter to my Gaussian surface. Because the charge density is non-uniform, I have to find some type of integration volume to integrate over the GS Gaussian surface. So what am I going to use for my integration element? Well, here it is. I choose a little disk of size dx prime, and it's located a distance x prime away from the center. And this is my integration variable. And then you can see that the volume of this disk is the cross-sectional area times dx prime. And the charge density is varying. And so this side becomes 1 over epsilon naught, the integral for my integration variable x prime equals 0. I'm just adding up a bunch of disks until I get to the edge of my Gaussian surface. That's x prime equals x. And that's why I use the prime integration variable to distinguish it from the Gaussian surface variable, which is the length of the Gaussian surface. And now I have b. Because we're on the positive side, this is just a positive x, but it's a variable x prime. It's the density. I want to get the charge inside that disk. So I need the density at x prime. And then I multiply it by the integration volume, a dx prime. And now that's an integral. That's easy to do. It's x prime squared over 2. And so what we get is 1 over epsilon naught b. When I put my limits in, I get x squared over 2 times a. I get e3a is equal to that. And I can conclude that the electric field is given with a magnitude 1 over epsilon naught b x squared over 2. The a's cancel from both sides. Now, as far as direction goes, it's pointing in the plus i hat direction. And this answer is good only for the region 0, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to d over 2. And that's a more difficult calculation. And now you can challenge yourself to calculate the electric field in the other three regions.